Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. All right, now it's time to go up to Lake of the Woods, check in with Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, you know, when we were up there at the end of the walleye season for the SGR 500, it was pretty busy. Fishing was good. There was a lot of people targeting sturgeon, a lot of people targeting walleyes. Uh, We caught some nice walleyes, but I'll tell you what, that sturgeon fishing, I think every year more and more kind of steals the show up there. And right now you could go up there and have, I mean, obviously there's going to be some sturgeon anglers, but you'd have a lot of the river to yourself right now, I bet. Oh man, yeah. I think I think you would have. You know, there, there, there's sturgeon anglers out there and stuff like that. But you know what? Um, it's spring fishing, and people aren't used to spring fishing this time of year. Most people are looking forward to the Minnesota fishing opener, and you know, even if people do come up to the rainy, a lot of people think about that April 14th. Okay, that's when the spring walleye season closes up. They don't think about coming up and catching sturgeon. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I'll give you a good one. I got uh, I got some good friends of mine. In fact. Uh, um, this friend of mine take, comes up with his family. They're from the FM Walleyes Unlimited Club out of Fargo Moorhead area, and you know he'll come up and they'll come a couple of days before the opener, and him and his family will fish sturgeon and have the the oh, waterways sure. to themselves. They'll catch a bunch of, in fact, it's Dave Wassonis, but uh, they'll they'll catch a bunch of sturgeon, and then of course for the Minnesota fishing opener, boom! All of a sudden it's May thirteenth, and now it's game on for the tradition, and and uh, they uh, they just fish right off of a Pine Island normally. Normally it's a jig bite, and they catch all the darn fish they they need to catch. Well, I know the uh, outside of Pine Island, it's open now. I know you fished outside the gap when you were up there, oh gosh, a week, week and a half ago, whatever it was. Um, and I saw some reports on Facebook of people fishing outside the gap right now. Uh, so things are looking pretty good for the opener up there, aren't they? Well, you know, and I'll tell you that the gap is open right now. That's where the Rainy River, of course, for people that don't know, that's where the Rainy River feeds into Lake of the Woods. And of course, that current is is what opens that up. But you know, we are, the majority of our lake is still ice covered. In fact, if you look at our Lake of the Woods Tourism's Facebook page, you can see I did kind of a, a coloration of where the open water is on Big Traverse Bay and, and also at the Northwest Angle. And, you know, it, it's it's really the, the majority of the lake is still ice covered. But, but I'll tell you something, um, just about every year, you, you know, uh, it's this way. And we're always wondering, man, alive, is it possible we could have some ice for the opener? Now, I'll tell you this. The very, very few years that we have had ice for the opener, I don't think it'll be this year. I don't know. Um, but but for the few years we've had, had had a little bit of ice for the opener, I'll tell you what happens. That rainy river is freaking game on. There's still a ton of walleyes in there. Um, you know what? Fishing along the shorelines on Lake of the Woods, that's where the majority of the walleyes are going to be anyway. You know, you might have ice out there, but fishing the shorelines, you know, it's game on. And, of course, if you go to the northwest angle, um, that water going between the islands because there's current, you know, there's the, the, the go-to spots to catch walleyes are, are open too. So, you know, um, it, it's going to be game on for the opener. One thing neat about the opener at Lake of the Woods, which is May 13th this year, one thing really cool is that I think naturally people think, geez, Lake of the Woods must be a darn zoo because it's the Minnesota fishing opener. The fact of the matter is it's not. I, I think a lot of people already have their traditions on where they go. Um, you know, I, I don't know, but but we're not like we're not slammed busy. Normally, there's plenty of you know lodging available, and you want to talk about a good spot to come for the Minnesota fishing opener. Now, certainly the weather can be really cold. It can be really hot. You never know what the weather's going to do, and that's anywhere in Minnesota. But I'll tell you, as far as the fishing goes, normally very consistent. Normally, it's a jig bite. And you probably find walleyes in the river too at that time. Oh, there's going to be walleyes in the river, no doubt. With this late spring we're having, oh, heck, there'll be a lot of leftover walleyes in the river. You know, people, you know, um, a lot of the walleyes, not all the walleyes, a a good percentage of walleyes will go into the Rainy River to spawn. But there is way more walleyes that don't even go to the Rainy River to spawn. Now, for the walleyes that do go to the river to spawn, some are going to stay there because there's plenty of food there to eat. Some are going to slide back out to the lake out in front of that Pine Island area. So you're going to have a combination of fish in the river, fish along the shorelines, and uh, and then just fishing, you know, shallower structure this time of year. Remember, Lake of the Woods, too, the water is a stained water. So fishing in that shallow water, I mean, it's it's really, really good. I think the other thing you need, need about it is a jig bite is a really fun bite. And on the Lake the of the best. Woods, the jig bite isn't it, – it's not so much that you're casting and jigging in. The jig bite on Lake of the Woods is more vertical jigging over the side of the boat while it's anchored. Or in some cases, you can move around a little bit. But most people will anchor up and just jig over the side of the boat. You want to talk about easy fishing, low stress, and enjoyable. You know, Lake of the Woods, we have big open expanses of mud. And uh, 
those walleyes and saugers are roaming around looking for food. You anchor up in an area where there's fish. You don't have to be a, on a spot on a spot. Those fish eventually are going to find you. Let's talk about the types of jigs that you're going to use out there too, Joe. You got a couple of different presentations you like to use? Oh, for sure I do. Well, you know, first off, that stained water. So I like using bright, bright colored jigs. So some of my favorites, you know, a lot of them have a gold base to them. That gold and that stained water is really good. But, you know, uh, like a pink, glow white and gold, man, that's one of my go-tos. You know, sometimes just mix in a, a glow, a chartreuse and gold or a glow, uh, or orange and gold uh, can be really, really good. Uh, some of the jigs now have little rattles on them. So the little rattle will add a little bit of extra noise to the to the jig. And I think the other thing to think about when you're jig fishing Lake of the Woods is, you know, the, how you hook your minnow. You know, we're, we're going to be using certainly, you know, fathead minnows, live fatheads and stuff. If they're available this year, they've been hard to get for anywhere in the state. But the other thing is we have a, a good abundance of frozen emerald shiners that the bait dealers had netted in the fall. And they freeze them. And those frozen shiners, you know, the best way to hook those shiners or even a regular minnow in some cases on Lake of the Woods, you take that uh, hook, you put that hook through the mouth of the minnow out the gill, and then you push that minnow all the way up to the jig head as far as you can, and you hook that uh, that hook back through the midsection of the minnow. You know, in the stained water, the walleyes really don't seem to mind that a bit. And the other thing is, when you get a bite, now they're going to get that hook in their mouth. The, the chances are that the hook's going to be in their mouth because you got that hook halfway back of the minnow rather than getting the short biters that just grab the tail of the minnow and you miss them. So that's one little tip that really puts a lot more fish in the boat and uh, it can make all the difference in the world, quite frankly. Well, well and talk about those short biters too because you also add a different way uh, of fish, uh, a different way of hooking up your minnow on there, Joe, in one of those pictures. Well, and I, I like using a stinger hook uh, oftentimes. And all, all a stinger hook is a very short piece of, of mono or floor cub and attached to a small treble hook. You can attach that to your jig, and now that little treble hook will go in the back just underneath the, the tail of the minnow. And, you know, when they grab it, again, this isn't the real gin clear water or wall has the opportunity to just examine your whole setup and, and say, no, thank you. This is stained water. Those fish are much more reactive to water displacement, sound, smell, and and just a profile. So they're not going to be able to examine that little treble hook hanging uh, below the tail of that minnow. You can get away with that real nicely. It's amazing how many big fish I have caught on a little, little uh, stinger hook with a little treble hook. Well, and, and if people are having a hard time finding bait, you know, plastics obviously worked well for us up there this spring. I'm, I'd assume plastics would work well year round up there. Plastics work great up there. Absolutely. You know, if, if most people, if they're able to use live bait or, or frozen bait, they will. Part of it's a confidence thing. I'll give you a good one. You know, uh, going up to the Northwest Angle, for those that decide to slide into the Ontario side of Lake of the Woods from the Northwest Angle, you know, it's you, you no longer can bring any kind of bait from the U.S. into Canada. Uh, not alive, not dead, not frozen, none of it. So it's forced a lot of our visitors to use plastics. And they're doing just as good as they were using live bait. It's a confidence thing. Pros and cons to everything. You know, with plastics, a lot of the plastics have good scent in them. You can use a paddle tail, a twister tail, a fork tail. You know, you can use uh, the many different colors with different uh, color combinations, glitter. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when you're jigging with, with a plastic, if a walleye or any other kind of fish hits you and you miss them, you know, normally when you set that hook, your live minnow or your, or your, your dead minnow would be gone. You're done. You have to reel up. By the time you reel up, rebate, get it down, that fish is gone now. You know, with a plastic, you set that hook, you miss that fish, that fish is still hot to trot. You got that plastic on, you drop it down, jig it a couple of times, very good chance that wallet will hit again. Well, Joe, if people want to make a plan uh, for taking a trip up there for opener or maybe get a summer trip planned up to Lake of the Woods, what should they do? Oh, for sure. Hit, hit our website up, and that is lakeofthewoodsmn.com. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Northern Minnesota's Walleye Factory is a year-round world-class fishing destination. The perfect getaway this summer is just a short drive to Lake of the Woods. Fish Big Traverse Bay, the Rainy River, or visit the unique Northwest Angle. To catch big fish, you have to go where the big fish are. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods at LakeOfTheWoodsMN.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com.